Our story begins in the middle of the 40s, when a hopeful young soldier called Sam... Oh, uh, we're not doing that? Our story begins in the middle of last Tuesday, where a hopeless young freeloader called Sam is sipping a fancy cup of coffee with a name nobody can pronounce. Sam was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. But not the actual spoon that he has in his mouth now. That is a different spoon. But a figurative spoon that represents all the wealth and attention that he has been receiving from his parents. And their butlers. And their butler's parents. You're a douche, aren't you, Sam? Blink twice if yes. <laughs> he can't hear me. This is Sam's girlfriend, also not being heard by Sam. She's mad at Sam for his lack of responsibility, produced by his large wealth. She also mentions the fact that Sam has forgotten her birthday for the third year in a row. Sam's girlfriend is upset. As with most rich and famous brats, Sam does not pick up on that. Instead, he decides to lay this gem. Things just work out for me, baby. I can't just run around and do stuff. I'd end up with a limp spine then, or something. Sam's girlfriend does something she should have done a long time ago. <laughs> Sam is laying unconscious on the floor. He gathers his strength and makes an effort to get up. Then he makes another effort to stand up straight. Sam is hit in the head so hard, he has to remind himself how to walk. He takes a right step. Then he takes a left step. Good job, Sam. You're very good at existing. Huh? How dare you startle my child? An overprotective <laughs> mother hurls a cup of coffee in Sam's face. He has to blink rapidly to regain his vision. Say something, Harold! Oh, gee. How is our son going to become a respected politician if he can't fend for himself? I thought he was going to become an actor. Oh, what's the difference? Sam remembers the one thing he's good at, paying for stuff. So he turns around to pay for his beverage. Sam pays the guy 500 euros, barely covering the coffee. Thanks for the tip, douchebag. Sam decides to hurl another 500 at the guy. Not such a douchebag after all. Sam spends a decade making his way out the door, which is pretty good for a guy with a major concussion. As Sam waggles outside, he sees his girlfriend on the other side of the road. Sam pulls himself together and rushes towards his soon-to-be ex-girlfriend. This is when a septic tank truck approaches Sam with an average speed of 90 kilometers per hour. The impact renders him eight types of dead.
Who cares who worked on the game? Just skip to the action. Who knew a bottle to the face would result in such a terrible fate for Sam? But a bottle won't be the only thing that will meet Sam's face today. There's also the ground in hell. Sam does not like being dead a single bit. He also hates the eerie feeling of not having any cash on him. Then he finds seven glowing notes in his pocket. That makes him feel reasonably better. The source of the sound is none other than obliteration and oblivion, extermination and extinction, the end, decease and demise, the grim reaper, death. He's trying to do a kickflip on a skateboard and is dressed like a douchebag for some reason. In his coarse, horrifying voice, he lays this on sound. Yo, yo, yo! You must be Sam from the info I was provided. Then he takes a second look at Sam and his eye sockets widen. Holy feces, dude. Your soul be like a diamond. Let me cut you a deal that we can seal. For reals? Aight, man. It decided. The notes in Sam's pocket are something called a shred of life. Every soul has at least one, and it is the biggest unit in Hell's currency, followed by quality of life, school of life, sound of life, meaning of life, and thug life. If you give me your shreds, I'll resurrect your face and get you out of Hell on one condition. You'll have to survive 24 hours with a handicap I choose under my supervision, bro. Sam decides to check out the rest of Hell before doing any deals with supernatural beings. Why, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be... Ooh, a plumber. That'll be all your shreds, dear sir. All right, that sounds fair. Yes. Sam notices that the souls that get into Hell are forced to get a job and become functioning souls of society. For most people, this is okay, but for Sam, it's horrifying. He hurls his shreds at death like he's never hurled piles of money before. Oh, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be, ooh, a minesweeper. That'll be all your shreds, dear sir. Could be worse, whatever. Kinda sounds fun. <laughs> Why, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be a struggling freelance artist. Oh, my. That'll be all your shreds, dear sir. No! This is truly hell! <laughs> well, looks like it's time for lunch, dear sirs and madams. Uh, take all your concern-related concerns up with upper management. See you in five hours. Sam has seen enough. He goes back to death and his deal. He keeps the last shred for the next time he meets the gatekeeper of hell. Whenever that's going to be. Hehe. <laughs> I, bro. I only get to do these deals annually. But if you really want to live in biz, you have to do it manually. Also, I will stop speaking in rhymes now. Psh Sam has just traveled through time, space, and logic, and finds himself fully alive, and more importantly, rich again. His joy is only dimmed by the fact that he can't move at all. This is when he shows up. Death. Yo, yo, yo! Oh, oh God, you look horrible. I mean, <laughs> you look great, bro. Uh, you be okay? Can you hear me? Um, blink twice if yes. 
Oh, cool. You be alive. Everything be fine. All right, so this here be the dealing biz. All your body functions be manual, so you kind of have to do stuff on purpose. Um, you be turning kind of blue. Might want to consider breathing. Bitchin! You be blinking and breathing, that be bitchin! So, all right. Go survive for a day, and I'll let you live normally for the rest of your life. If you somehow die within the next 24 hours, you'll go to hell and I'll keep your shreds forever. I'll be over there doing kick flips if in you need me. Once again, Sam has to make an effort to get up. This time, he has to focus on his spine. And, once again, he has to remind himself how to walk. Oh, by the way, dude, you be getting late for work. Sam does something that resembles walking toward the bathroom. Gonna do a kickflip now. Sam tries out a strange maneuver by stepping with the same leg twice. Sam has some trouble with his posture and has to focus on his spine. Yeah. <gasps> Sam holds on to that toothbrush like his life depends on it. Sam has some trouble with his posture and has to focus on his spine. Sam with clean teeth, Sam is ready to smile. He won't for at least 24 hours, though. He has to use his opposite leg to get up again. Sam tries to take a leak. Hey, dude, have you seen Sam that? has some trouble with his posture uh, and has to focus on his spine. Sam takes a leak everywhere, including, but not limited to, himself. One empty bladder later, Sam moves on. Sam tries to take a shower. He looks like a mantis that's trying to explain to someone how a bicycle works. Sam is clean as a whistle. Good job, Sam. You're impressing no one, Sam. Clean and empty, Sam decides to find some clues. Friggin' skateboard. Hi, right, let's see. <gasps> yeah! Yeah! Sam can open doors now. Clever boy. Your spine, Sam! It matters! Uh. Sam enters his wardrobe. What will he wear today? He picks a pair of blue jeans. The ugly ones. Sam successfully puts on his pants, feeling more accomplished than ever. He proceeds to find a jacket. Only the best one will do. He settles for a mediocre one. Humble. <sighs> Full 
fully clothed, Sam is ready for the day. P.S. He's not. He puts on his shoes, living the dream of having shoes on. Sam walks down the stairs with great precision. Flappy Rooster is Sam's favorite game. He has no time for playing with a Flappy Rooster right now, though. Following this story at this time, and gang wars are still an escalating problem at Bridge Street, where the police are struggling to regain control. Commuters are advised to... Hey, Lucy, I'm home. Oh, hey, dude. Still alive, huh? There is a note saying, sent over a maid to make you breakfast. Don't breathe in while chewing. Love, Mom. Sam decides to try his luck on some coffee drinking. Sam's coffee is so hot, he blows on it before taking a sip. <gasps> Sam hurls coffee into his eyes, for reasons unknown. Sam hurls coffee into his eyes again, for reasons still unknown. Out of cups, out of hope. Or not. He decides having third degree burns with some coffee in his system, Sam finds it easier to exist. He finally makes it out the front door, beaten, terrified, stupid. Dude, I am totally gonna kick flip over your car. like that when I got there. You might want to get that hood fixed. It, it be loose. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just get in the car, yo. <laughs> 